uh, a plan to uh, open the digital menus company. So let's hear from Hussein Ali. so far. Uh, the, the second thing I want to mention is human attention span. So human attention span in 2000, uh, in 2000 was 12 seconds. Uh, now it's at uh, 8 seconds, so it's always like kind of going down. So think about the digital space, all the distractions we have, and as you're creating all these online strategies, you always have to think about where are we going as human beings, right? I mean, uh, Goldfish uh, has a attention span of nine seconds, whereas we only have eight seconds, so, and their attention span hasn't gone down in the last, uh, you know, from 2000 to 2015, it's still at nine percent, so think about that when you're talking about all those strategies that, that Mark was saying, how do you create content, how do you talk to people, how do you, you know, engage with people in those little snippet of information, because when you are talking to somebody and, you know, if I'm going to talk to you even face to face, and I'm gonna tell this long story, you probably lost me at eight yeah, seconds, you're done. That. Yeah, so, you know, you have to make sure the way you uh, you talk to people or tell your message in the marketing format, it has to be very decisive. Mm. Uh, the list of advice uh, which kind of stuck with me was, was, you will never have all the answers. So again, if you're sitting there and trying to, you know, do the analysis for us is where I need to have all the answers before I can start, you might never get started. So, you know, just get, to a point where you have something to, to start with and then move on and then keep on you know doing the hard work to, to get all the other answers that you need. Uh, selective with your clients. So I wanted to create, to 
be this premium digital signage agency when I, when I started the company. And that meant that I would have to say no to some business because you know, I could be working really hard uh, in, uh, in doing a lot of small jobs maybe or things that were not profitable. Uh, so I, I said to myself, I'm gonna be selective with my clients so that the first client that I have today is gonna set the stage for the second client I have. So again, uh, you know, make sure you understand uh, who your clients are going to be as well. Leverage yourself. Uh, I really, this was good advice given to me, but I really didn't understand what that meant until maybe last year or maybe a year and a half uh, ago. Uh, and what that, what that meant to me was maybe you, you can tell other people and then maybe they can help you sell. I was pretty vague about that, you know, I wasn't sure. But I think what happened was uh, after the business plan competition, as we were sort of focusing on this digital menu board company, uh, I got an opportunity to meet with uh, Benny Keith Food Distribution Company. There is a you know a really big uh, food distribution company that covers the southern United States region, and I think they have like 40,000 restaurant customers. And we got a chance to connect with them and become their uh, digital menu board vendor, preferred digital menu board vendor. And uh, and that's when I realized, okay, that's what leveraging means. So now I can leverage all the 44,000 customers and 1,500 salespeople that they have who can then say, you know what, yeah, by the way, we have this you know, preferred vendor that you can talk to. And so that's, I think, at least right now, uh, what leverage means, and obviously there's more ways to do that. And the other thing was, why can't I do it? So I mean, you know, when I was creating a business, it wasn't like I want to start, you know, uh, a small company that will support me. Yes, obviously, you know, there's all those things, but why can't we be, we the global business, you know, why can't I create the next Google? Why can't I do this? So, you know, why can't I, it's just a question, but whenever you're trying to do something within your industry, uh, look at the best and say, why can't I do it? And then, you know, once you have the goals set so high, as you're going through that journey, you'll find out, okay, well, there's an opportunity, let me just take that. And so it's a, it's a path basically, but you have the end goal in mind and, and that kind of helps obviously. If I'm going to California, I need to take I-10 and that would be the shortest path. If I do decide to maybe do some sightseeing and, and scenic routes, like, it might take me a little bit longer, but at least I know I'll get to California in the end. So I think that's just, that's the, that's the main thing. The other thing was go deep uh, before you go wide. So obviously in online and, and all these other things, it's kind of important, uh, especially for, for us because we're an online business as well, but we focus on helping customers in Houston. So. My goal with our marketing is obviously make sure I can get as much market share in the Houston market, and then eventually these restaurants that have changed in multiple states will you know, take us outside the state. So again, the goal is spend all our efforts in thinking that we're this national company, but allowing our efforts to channel and growth in the local market. So uh, go deep before you go wide. And, and that's actually a very solid statement for completely online business. So if you're thinking about going anything online, uh, make sure you understand that statement and, and what goes into that. Uh, learn to communicate. Again, as a business owner, you will have to communicate to your employees, your vendors, your uh, investors, uh, figure out a way what works for each of those groups and learn how you're gonna talk to those people. It's very important. Uh, develop your brand and brand yourself. So as a small business, you need to make sure that you're always thinking about your brand. Uh, Small businesses really don't think about that. They're like, well, I don't have all the money to brand, you know, to create a brand for my business, uh, but you have yourself. So use your uh, experiences to create a brand for yourself. And the way I did that was, you know, get industry certifications uh, that gets you really up close to the people in the top of the industry. And, you know, if you take their class, call them your mentor, they're all yours. I mean, you know, you can you can use those you know acronyms in front of your name, and, and that started a lot of conversations and, and things like that. So again, uh, brand yourself. The uh, so so again, as we were going through that first stage where we you know I started the company Houston Dynamic Displays, and I got myself out in the market. I didn't have all the answers, but once we got to the point where we saw a lot of restaurants you know requiring our services, we said, okay, well, it looks like there's a market there. Uh, and uh, I'm not really selling much to these, these guys. Maybe 
what's wrong with that? So, you know, is it the price? Is it the software? Is it the solution that, they, that they're looking for? And obviously, once we answered all those questions, I came across a product which we uh, developed in-house, and we were able to cut down the cost of what would have cost a restaurant ten thousand dollars to five thousand dollars. We said, okay, well, this is something that a small to medium-sized restaurant would be really interested in buying. Uh, and and with that in mind, uh, that's when I heard, uh, you know, HCC was having a business plan conversation. I said, okay, well, I have the formula. It it seems to be working. How do I then grow this to a next level? Uh, and, and that means that I need to have a proper business plan, some research go behind that to be able to, uh, you know go to investors, to be able to go to employees, to be able to, you know, go to people that I need to in order for me to say, okay, well, it's not just a one-man company, there's people that are gonna be working along with it, and so to do all of those, I needed a lot of answers. So the first statement I said, you will never have all the answers. With the business plan, I got almost 80% of the answers at least. But then even after the business plan, things have changed, mm -hmm. so you always are adapting, obviously, mm -hmm. business plan is live, so in fact, the website I used to create my business plan uh, it's called Live Plan. Uh, they use it in a lot of uh, you know business plan competitions. But again, it was just a way for me to to kind of you know put all those uh, all that information together. Uh, and and so at the, the the business plan was really you know allowing us the mentorship that we needed. Uh, if I had a question, hey, you know what, is this going to really work? And, and I had an advisor or a mentor to ask that question. So maybe I could have done this on my own. Taken me a couple of years. Uh, but with that competition, it was just really swift where I was able to go through all those uh, different strategies and figure out the right, uh, right path uh, to, to success. And uh, we're still working hard every day to, to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you.